Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is a Sig Sauer Tango 6T variable magnification optic. Innovation in variable magnification optics continues to get better and better. Quickly, we're seeing the lower, or lower variable magnification optics become more popular, or just as popular as red dots for your intermediate use rifles or intermediate range rifles. Uh, reason we're seeing that is because a lot of purpose of intent uh, used to be with a magnified optic, you're looking at something from more long range and CQB or those closer distances, say 25 and in or even 50 and in, wasn't really a significant consideration. And it wasn't something you'd necessarily want to put on a rifle if you realistically thought about, okay, my primary use is probably going to be closer rather than further away. Those, you know, 5, 10, 15, 25 yard shots versus shooting out to 100 or further. Now, this is no more telling than we see the military seeking out these lower variable magnification optics uh, for replacement of more venerable fixed magnification or even CCO systems because the nature of combat has changed and no longer do we have people asking for uh, 500 rounds specific or 500 yard I should say specific engagement distances on optics looking more for something that's more unpredictable such as you know five yards out to 300 yards or 400 yards or 500 yards realistically. Now I have absolutely no problem admitting that the first generation of SIG electronic optics from SIG electronic optics I wasn't significantly impressed with. Uh, I felt like the intent was there but the durability wasn't. So when I got my hands on the Tango 6T and this is actually the Army contract one which we'll talk about I wouldn't say I was apprehensive, but I wasn't expecting to be incredibly surprised, even though this optic now in three different variants has won various U.S. Army contracts. Mil-spec is mil-spec, and, and some people think mil-spec is the holy grail, when eh, not necessarily. Mil-spec is an acceptable degree of tolerance as the military is willing to accept in a product. It doesn't mean it's going to be the best thing out there. It also doesn't mean it's going to be great, because there's plenty of mil-spec things that if given the choice, a lot of people would be like, yeah, I don't want to use that. The Tango 6T is a one to six magnification optic. This particular one is first focal plane with a DWLR6 reticle. If you go ahead and Google that, you'll notice, well, at the time of filming this anyway, there's not a lot of whole, there's not a whole lot of information out there. And the reason for that is it's an Army mill specific requested reticle for their DVO program, which is direct view optic program, which is going to replace, in fact, this optic has already won the contract to do so, so, going to replace the venerable fixed power magnification such as the ACOG and kind of work hand in hand with the CCO system, which is either main point or EOTech or, or what have you. But it's going to give the option for mounting on the M4A1 for somebody to go one power to six power for various distance engagements, which I think is something the military should have been doing a long time ago. As you know, the first thing I do with practically anything firearms related is the burn down. I'm going to put 500 rounds through the firearm, in this case through the firearm for the purposes of testing the Tango 6T, to see if that accelerated rate of fire causes any issues that we wouldn't otherwise see with the same round count over a much longer period of time. So here's the burn down.
First to last round, absolutely no issues whatsoever. So continuing on with my review, I was already happy after having zeroed it and done my 500 round initial burn down. Had another 1500 rounds to go for the purpose of the video. Did a lot of CQB distances. Uh, and I know that's a very you know uh, vague term, but basically when I, when I think of CQB, I think of 25 and in. Even 50 and in, but mainly 25. Those very close proximal distances at which I need rapid shots coming from a high ready or a low ready. I worked at the shoot house using UTMs, which doesn't count for the 2000 around round count if you're curious uh, that's an actual addition too so i got a whole bunch of reps uh force on paper if you will in the shoot house running with the tango 6t and i was very impressed with well the overall performance of the optic and i kind of already talked about it the eye relief is forgiving enough that i don't have a significant issue snapping rapidly into the rifle for a cheek weld in order to get my hit every now and then yeah i would have some scope shadow no big deal because i'm shooting at 25 yards and this is something that we don't want to be we want to be knowledgeable about. If you're worried about scope shadow causing a significant issue, you should be testing your equipment and seeing how much scope shadow you can get away with and what actual devi- and it's going to cause a deviation, but is it a deviation you're actually going to be able to appreciate? I think you'll find with a high quality optic, especially we're talking about the Tango 6T, that I was shooting this thing without really a lot of attention to scope shadow if I felt like I didn't have time. Uh, that slight misalignment of the head behind the optic based on cheek weld and, and, and lack of time to, to kind of really set it in. You know, basically how you'd snap into a rifle if you had a threat of five yards. Uh, and I didn't see a significant enough deviation to give me pause. Prior to being selected as the DVO or the DVO winner for the direct view optic for the Army for more of a uh, general issue, the Tango 6T in a slightly different variant was selected by the Army for the squad de designating marksman rifle. You can see that on DMRs. And also SOCOM picked it up for the squad variable powered scope uh, contract requirement. Now, the significant difference between those optics is the reticle. Uh, it's not a 7.62 specific, uh, and it's not a 5.56 slash 7.62 multi-use reticle. What you're getting with this particular optic is what they call the DWLR6, which is a, I kind of like it, uh, uh, liken it to a Horus Light. It has the same basic principles and the same intuitive math that's easily done the way the reticle is designed. So I've got elevation holds, obviously. That's something we've come to expect, but I've also got five and 10 mile an hour wind holds. Also, I've got a horseshoe and center dot segment reticle that is very useful when turned on for our magnification set, or I'm sorry, our brightness settings for CQB. So running this thing on one power, I have an illuminated reticle that's going to give me a dot size that I'm familiar with coming over from a red dot site. You might be asking yourself, well, what could you possibly do to this reticle in your review that the U.S. Army hasn't already done in their testing? And you're absolutely correct. But one thing I found interesting when re reviewing the testing protocol is they don't do drops quite like I do. So if nothing else, in this video, you're getting a 2,000 round review, uh, my general subjective and objective feelings about the optic, and you're getting those four shoulder height drops, which I've kind of pigeonholed myself into when testing pretty much anything. Uh, you're going to get a drop every 500 rounds. So the Tango 6T came ready to go right out of the box. Now, the one I have is the mill contract one with the DWLR6 reticle, including the mount. And what I found out is that mount is actually what we generally refer to as unobtainium. I have the actual 1913 Pictini, whereas the commercially available version, the only difference is going to be some of the markings. And the mount is not, it's more of a universal or stanag or whatever that is. I always forget how to pronounce that compared to uh, the 1913 specific. So other than that, this optic that I'm using is the same one you're gonna be able to pick up on the open market. First thing I'm gonna check with something like this is, is it true one power? I found that, yeah, if there is any additional magnification over one X, it was not noticeable to my eye. And of course, when it comes to one power settings, what we're looking for is an optic that can hang with a red dot, meaning those closer distances. Is it going to be capable of shooting those closer distances? And I found that using it on one X or even sometimes bumping it up to two, which is rare, usually I go for minimum magnification or maximum magnification. I very rarely stop in the middle, although occasionally, you know, I gotta leave it on the table for something that I'm doing. Uh, but using it on one X for a closer distance, if we're talking three yards out to 25, I found that especially, not necessarily in lighting conditions, depending, I would either have to run the reticle, turn it on, or, you know, leave it off, depending, like I said, lighting conditions. I found that the eye box and encompassing with the cheek weld, even though this mount sits a little lower than I would like, I would like to have seen a closer to a 1.7 or a 1.9 height, just for a more natural neck position on the gun. Even then, uh, it was intuitive snapping in once you got used to the eye relief, which is pretty generous 
uh, this thing runs just like a red dot. I didn't notice any significant issues when using it those closer distances. Now something people like to bring up is, well, you know, adverse positions or, or if I'm, I'm, I'm doing something that I'm just not used to, the red dots just make more sense because I'm worried about scope shadow and parallax. Here's the thing, uh, parallax is going to be a thing. If your head is slightly out of alignment with your optic in relation to your target, parallax is present. On a red dot, you may not notice that parallax. On a magnified optic, even on a one power, if you have a little bit of parallax inherent in your sight picture, you're gonna have that scope shadow, which means the optic is doing you a favor that a red dot isn't necessarily going to do. So it's not a bad thing, it's training wheels. So the argument of, well, I, magnified optics are just not as good because if I have to shoot, you know, supine prone underneath a car, uh, I might have some scope shadow. Okay, cool. Put your red dot on what you want to hit, take the shot, actually do the math and see if it actually causes a point of aim, point of impact shift that you're not willing to accept at that distance. My argument has always been, it can be a little bit slower if you're trying to perfectly center the reticle, but you're not doing that on the red dot, but you're not aware of it on the red dot. But this is kind of getting away from the review, uh, so I don't want to go too much in depth on that. Uh, I found, like I said, at the closer distances, this thing can hang just as well as any red dot you're likely to put on your rifle. With the Tango 60, you're getting 1x to 6x magnification with the DWLR6 reticle, which is illuminated, so I've got multiple brightness settings as well as two night vision settings. The night vision settings were kind of curious to me. I think that's mainly because maybe the military requested it. Uh, passive aiming through a magnified optic can be problematic, although I found that it was completely doable on one power. I could put on that night vision setting and be able to passively aim through night vision, but again, mount height becomes an issue then. Passively aiming wearing night vision through a lower mounted optic is problematic no matter what the optic is, uh, but it was doable. And of course you could slave a, a, a red, or I'm sorry, you could slave night vision to it if that was something you wanted to do. Uh, I do have a threaded cap, so if I wanted to put a kill flash on it or something like that, that's something I could do. The elevation and windage turrets are captured, which I think is smart, especially for something that's going to be, you know, general purpose versus like a dedicated precision rifle optic. The 30 millimeter, 30 millimeter main tube, you can of course swap out the mount if you wanted to. Uh, like I said, the, my only issue with the mount was the height. Uh, you want to get away from that, go for a taller mount. You know, 30 millimeter main tube, you can just put whatever you want on it, you'd be good to go. Uh, mounting was pretty intuitive. Mine was ready to go out of the box. Of course, I checked the torque, but everything's everything's uh, basically etched onto the mount, torque specs and such like things like that. Uh, but I checked them. Everything was good to go. It was assembled from the factory. Kind of an aside on that, as I was recently out at SIG at their uh, their factory slash offices out in Oregon, and I watched the assembly of the Tango 6T, and I watched it from inside a Tyvek suit with little rubber booties on and gloves and a mask because it's one of those super high-speed clean rooms like you see in the movies. And I was very impressed with the way that they were assembling everything um, in general, not just the Tango 6T, but I also checked out the Romeo Zero and the Romeo 1 Pro and the Romeo 2 Pro, which I'm filming in this video is not quite out yet, but I'm excited for that as well. Uh, everything's assembled here in the USA. There's There's been a misconception out there that a lot of SIGS optics come from China. And I can tell you right now that I stood in the United States of America and watched them putting this stuff together. Uh, and they take a great deal of care in the Tango 6T. Oh, even their own internal testing is something that I just can't compete with. I can't do long-term wind and sand variable testing. Put it in a booth that's gonna constantly blow heat and sand on it for 24 or 48 hours or submerge it in a saltwater tank or do any of the number of things that they're gonna do to their own, their own optics, their own products. And then with this particular optic, it actually you know got granted now three government contracts meeting mil spec standards three times for three slightly different organizations inside the US Army. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Now for my review purposes, I mounted it on 11.5 inch Sons of Liberty Gunworks. Uh, this particular optic is intended for the M4A1 slash, you know, multi-purpose DMR rifle. Maybe they'll, you know, you'll see them pop up on a M16A4, even though there is a separate Tango 60 that the Army selected for DMR rifles, uh, I believe they're gearing those more for the 308 variant. So if someone's using a smaller caliber, say 556 and an M16A4 for a DMR, this, this optic would serve that role very, very well. Uh, CQB was good to go, stretching out the distances. One of the things I really appreciated about the variable magnification, the switch view, if you will, is it's not, 
it doesn't take two hands to break it in. I don't really feel like I have to struggle or fight with it or risk injuring myself if I'm adjusting on the gun. Uh, and it comes with a, a, an actual rat tail or, or whatever you, you want to call that little switch view handle that we use. There's a bunch of different names for it. No one's really landed on one. Uh, it's got everything I need right out of the box, which which I really appreciated. Even though I am mount specific, like I do like to, you know, like, okay, it's cool, you got your own mount, that's cute. Usually those are in there as kind of an afterthought. Uh, the mount that came with it, which is OEM, OEM from SIG, the only issue I had with it was the overall height. Durability was great. Using the rifle for various distances, I was able to shoot it out to 300 yards. I didn't really, not really able to stretch it out any further than that. And truth be told, shooting on an 11 inch gun, uh, I can hit things further than 300 yards away, but it's not something I'm usually gonna do with that short of a rifle. Glass quality. My measure of light transmission in an optic is low light. I'm already going to push a lot of lumens and a lot of candela, but that doesn't mean the scope I'm using is going to be able to keep up with that, meaning light collection has got to be there. I've got to have an optic that I can see through at night. And what I've noticed with some optics is you go to low light with them and you turn on a weapon light and you look out and you look behind the reticle and you look, over the, look past the reticle and you look through the reticle and you notice that there's a significant difference in light transmission making it through the optic. That's not something I experienced in the Tango 6T. I think that they've got a really good high quality glass in there. There's not a noticeable notch filter, which is awesome for clarity and PID purposes at distance. However, it is a little bit detrimental for overall battery life. I'm not getting out of their, uh, their fire dot system Hellfire system. I'm not getting the battery life that I would love to see, but that's me being unrealistic and wanting unrealistic things out of a magnified optic. Not everything is going to do everything. So the overall runtime is right around 100 hours, depending on you know if you're in setting five or setting six. But illuminated reticle is not something you're going to use all the time. In fact, often the only time I did use it is when I was on one power. Uh, if I was going to be shooting out to greater distances, it's not something I really factored in. I just dialed out and turned the reticle off. Um, there's complaints that could be made about that. However, you can't have it both ways. You're not going to have really super clean glass and a crazy amazing battery life sticking with the venerable 2032 battery source. Of course, the ultimate elephant in the room, mainly with my videos, is durability. Is the optic going to be durable? Now, my main durability testing, aside from just shooting the optic, with some optics I do manipulations, but this isn't a handgun optic, so I'm not really gonna beat this thing against a wall. No purpose for that. But I am gonna do the drop test, which is a shoulder height drop test on concrete, not plywood covered concrete like the mil spec testing requires. And it is gonna be attached to this Hesting rifle. So I did one drop every 500 rounds for a total of four shoulder height drops during the 2000 round review process for this video. Here's your drops. If that made you cringe at home, it made me cringe doing it. Every time I dropped the rifle for the purposes of the drop test, it was either making impact on the top turret or a combination of top and either the windage or the illumination knob. And it resulted in a very battle-worn, quote unquote, looking optic at the, at the end of the review process. But of course the question is, did it maintain zero? Now the caveat to this is, if your optic takes a spill, if your rifle takes a spill, you lean it up against the tailgate and it falls over, lean it up against the wall and it falls over, set it on something and gravity does its thing and it falls over, or you drop it from a shoulder height, or your sling QD slaps and the rifle falls on the ground. However gravity did its thing, you wanna check your zero before you trust your life to it. But here's the five round group I fired at the zero distance of 100 yards prior to beginning the review. And here's a five round group I fired after the last drop test. I would call that zero maintained. Very impressed with the overall performance of the Tango 6T. And, and I, think I like SIG's approach. They're taking a very Henry Ford approach to things, being that you know they want to be able to provide their own suppressors, their own ammunition, their own firearms, and their own optics and they're making a strive to make as much of their uh, optics and optic components here in the United States because that's something that a lot of people want to see and I'm, I'm definitely right there with them. I'd rather see jobs in America than overseas, but I also go where the quality is. Uh, the Tango 6T is just a great example of how SIGS has come, I wouldn't say a long way, but they have come a way from their first generation of optics offerings. That doesn't mean those optics were bad. 
This meant the focus was more on clarity and battery life or, or clarity and performance than it was on durability. And durability is something that we all want and need. And I kind of set my own goalposts when it comes to optic testing. So now everything has to meet the standard that I kind of pigeonhole hold myself into. And I would rather have an optic that could meet those goalposts than one that couldn't. So when it comes to magnified optics, generally what we find is the durability isn't the same as what we'd get from a red dot. That's not necessarily the case anymore. And I think the Tango 6T is one optic, not the only, but one optic that kind of proves the point that you can have both, you can have it both ways. You can have a more fragile variable magnification optic that works kind of like a red dot or close to a red dot on those one magnification settings, but also provides the same degree of durability. And, and of course, my humble testing, I obviously didn't test a complete mil-spec standards because the military already did that, so I don't need to do that. I found that the Tango 6T is an excellent choice for a variable magnification optic. Is there things I don't like about it? Yeah, I'm not really hip on the color, um, but I'm not really a desert tan guy. I'd love to see him make an OD green one, but that's kind of a literally a cosmetic issue and it's probably not going to happen. I would also like to see it available in other magnifications. I would like to see it in a 1 to 8 or a 1 to 10. However, I've always been kind of happy with 1 to 6. I feel like it gives you the best of both worlds because generally what happens is the more magnification you add into an optic the less eye relief you get so one to six i think is a reasonable magnification for a multi-purpose rifle at variable distances also it's a weight saving sometimes when you go up in magnification you also go up in weight so i think the tango 6t is going to be something that i'm going to have more than one of i do plan on purchasing another one the next time i need a variable magnification optic and i am looking through um, my small little collection of firearms that I use quite a bit and thinking, does that need a red dot or can I replace that red dot with a verification optic and give myself more options? Because I'm a PID kind of shooter. Yeah, I can shoot something at 200 yards of the red dot or 100 yards of the red dot or 50 yards of the red dot, but can I positively identify it? So being able to mag out and glass something and then either stay on that magnification or come back in is wildly appealing to me over just having a 2 MOA little red reticle and being like, yeah, I kind of see what I'm trying to hit. Is that the right target? Or, you know, for a more real world application, is that the right person? So if you're curious about the Tango 6T, I'm super happy with it. I think it's a great optic. Uh, I plan on keeping this one and like I said, getting another or another another uh, for future uses. Um, is it my all-time hands-down favorite variable magnification optic? I think that's an apples and oranges kind of question, but I will say this. It's a one to six that I plan on purchasing again, and I think when it comes to accolades, owning two of something is, is, is pretty, pretty high up there. Uh, so I definitely want to give a big thanks to SIG for bringing me out to Oregon and giving me a, a tour of the facility and letting me see the optics manufacturing and giving me the Tango 6T that I used in this video thinking I was going to cherish it and love it and put it on a rifle and, and never abuse it and take great care of it. Instead, I brought it home, put 2,000 rounds to it and purposely dropped it on concrete four times and it passed. I'm Eric Calvin with Stage Dynamics. Train accordingly.